In the majesty of the Rocky Mountain wilderness, a serene pond creates a lush and lovely setting. But this pond is neither a natural feature of the land, nor is it a man-made construction. Instead, it is the remarkable creation of an animal that has transformed our continent. Nature's great architect and engineer, the beaver. Perhaps only man himself does more to alter the environment. However, the beaver seems to go as one better, almost invariably improving the surroundings for itself and other animals. Its industry and skill create thriving habitats where only poor ones existed. Streams and meadows become havens for the wildlife of the area. Once hunted to the edge of extinction, today conservationists have enlisted the help of the beaver to reclaim badly eroded stream and creek banks. Their natural activities can undo the damage of human neglect. Across our entire country, the land bears the benevolent mark of this gentle and extraordinary creature. As the beaver dams creeks and streams, it prevents precious soil from being washed away. The newly created ponds enrich the surrounding area. Insects and plants begin to flourish and provide new feeding grounds for much of the wildlife. For the beaver himself, the ponds and lodges provide essential protection. A virtually defenseless animal spends at least a quarter of its life in the water where it cannot be easily reached by wolves or bears. The strategy could not protect them, however, from their most dangerous predator, man. North American trappers began to seek the rich brown fur of the beaver in the 17th century. Over the next 200 years, the beaver population was decimated. Finally, protective laws were passed around the turn of this century. For now, the beaver is safe from the threat of extinction. Its comeback has been a boon to many creatures. This moose and her calf feast on the algae and pond weeds which thrive in the environment of a beaver pond. The animal is neither aggressive nor greedy. It works steadfastly, alone or with its family, to maintain its architectural wonders throughout the years. are growing shorter, the air is crisp. The beaver begins its elaborate preparations for the severe winter ahead. Its skills aren't limited to engineering and construction. Ever resourceful, it gathers branches of trees like aspen and willow, suspending them in the icy water. This way, the branches will stay fresh, providing bark for the animals to feed on all winter long. If a stored branch protrudes out of the water, the beaver will often eat the exposed part first before the solid ice makes it unobtainable.
few other animals maintain such a secure food supply, the seeds and berries that grow near the pond will be a crucial source of food for them in the coming months. The chipmunk carefully pries open a rosehip berry. It will keep the seeds within, hoarding them like bits of treasure. The food it gathers now will have to last through five long months of snow and ice. For some animals of the Rockies, fall signals a restless season. This is the time of the rut. Elk begin a complex ritual to win the right to meet and sire offspring. Patiently, the cows await the outcome of the duel. Though the competition is serious, the animals are seldom mortally injured. However, the stakes are high. The winner has access to the herd of cows. The loser must try again. As autumn quickly progresses, the beavers remain preoccupied with gathering branches. Cottonwood, willow, alder, almost anything will do, though aspen is the flavor of choice. The vital food supply is anchored close to the entrance to the lodge. It will be readily accessible even in the coldest weather. The lodge itself has been repaired and fortified. It must be ready to withstand the first winter storm. By late November, the pond has begun to freeze over. The moose and her young calf can no longer feed on the plant life that grew in its peaceful waters. They must begin the search for whatever meager food they can forage in the hills. Creatures with the ability to migrate head for less forbidding territory. Winter has settled in, quietly, firmly, undeniably. are not only well stocked with a food supply, but also protected by their well insulated dwelling. As the mud and sticks freeze as solid as cement, they provide a windproof shelter against the bitter cold. Snug inside, the beavers are prepared for months of quiet isolation. From underneath the piled lodge material, they have cut a chamber with separate areas for eating and sleeping. Each lodge is a single family dwelling, housing a pair of beavers who mate for life and their offspring. The young stay with their parents for close to two years, learning the complex routines of beaver life. This seven month old will live harmoniously with his new brothers and sisters, known as kits, when they are born next spring.
Beavers are aquatic rodents, spectacularly well suited to their watery environment. Large and well-developed lungs allow the animals to stay submerged for up to 15 minutes at a time. In winter, they can prolong their dive even further by breathing air that has been trapped between the water and the ice. The beaver leaves the lodge in the winter only when necessary. One by one, the branches are carried home to be eaten in warmth and safety. Skin flaps behind the teeth allow the beaver to hold the branches without swallowing water. The well-mannered beaver sits on its haunches, turning the branch like corn on the cob. Its sharp front teeth will strip away the bark in no time, leaving nothing but the woody core. Beavers are strict, but rather voracious vegetarians. They eat up to two pounds of food a day, swimming back and forth many times to raid the storage area. Each time a beaver returns to the lodge, the others use their keen sense of smell to reassure themselves that the animal is a member of the family. Secure, well-fed and warm, the beaver enjoys an after-dinner groom. The animal's combined body heat makes the interior of the lodge quite comfortable. Outside, the temperature is plummeted to 40 below. Other animals are suffering in the harsh conditions. The elk gain what little sustenance they can by nibbling on the few remaining twigs branches and grasses. Finding food becomes a full-time occupation. Those that don't survive will end up becoming meals for other starving animals. The lean and hungry coyote scours the frozen landscape, looking for whatever it can scavenge. It is not an easy time. The chipmunk is in a somewhat better situation. Although his body fat won't see him through the winter, he wakes from hibernation periodically to nibble on his cache of nuts and berries. Spring is still a good month or two away, but the beaver continues to fare well. An oily liquid secreted from a gland near the base of its tail is rubbed into the undercoat. The oil helps repel the icy water and keeps the beaver warm and its skin dry on its forays into the pond. Beavers are the largest rodents in North America, weighing on the average between 30 and 70 pounds. Like rodents everywhere, they have remarkable teeth. Their incisors grow continuously throughout the animal's lifespan. If the beaver doesn't wear down its teeth by gnawing, the top incisors can grow back into the palate, piercing the skull and causing death. But for the industrious beaver, this is seldom a problem. 
In early April, the days are growing longer at last. The sunlight lingers more each day, and winter begins to lose its icy grip. Melting snow will swell the dormant streams and rivers, bringing them to life. The sudden thaw is placing pressure on the beaver's dam. Giving way, the dam unleashes a torrential flood, summoning the beavers from their lodge. Dam building is an instinctive and irresistible reaction to the sound of rushing water. However, the skills that make the beaver such a superb engineer must be practiced to be perfected. Repairs are set about quickly and efficiently. Small sticks are placed carefully in between larger ones to stop the water's flow. Usually it is only an emergency of this magnitude that will make a beaver leave its lodge during the day. Early accounts suggest that the beaver was originally a daytime creature, but the advent of the trappers drove the majority of these supremely adaptable animals into a nocturnal routine, sleeping by day, and leaving the lodge only under cover of darkness. Using their teeth and claws, beavers can create impressive structures some 12 feet high and 600 feet long. A pair of beavers, using mostly sticks and mud, but supplementing with just about any material they can find, may build a substantial dam in three or four nights. Far from randomly piling up twigs, beavers use the water line as a carpenter's level and adapt their design to both the flow of the water and the natural features of the land. Work continues long into the spring evening until the situation is under control. If the melting ice caused a problem for the beavers, it is good news for a host of other animals. Wood ducks take advantage of the pond in a variety of ways, using it to nest in and to raise their young. The tree killed by flooding when the beavers built the dam becomes a nesting place for the wood duck. Soon the pair will mate, producing up to 20 ducklings. As the frozen earth thaws, flowers and grasses sprout once more around the pond. The chipmunk no longer has to depend on the dwindling food he had stored away months before.
The beavers often linger in the pond till sunrise. They swim with easy grace, propelled by powerful back legs. Broad, flat tails maneuver them expertly through the pond. Beavers are superbly designed for underwater activity. Special valves close off its nose and ears, and thin membranes act as goggles for the eyes. The pond is filled with new life. Warmed by the spring sunshine, a multitude of creatures begin to stir the waters once again. Thousands of larvae hatch from tiny eggs. They are only a fraction of this underwater kingdom, where every drop seems to hold another form of life. It is a time of abundance. It is also a frantic season for some of these creatures. They will mature, mate, and die in a few short months, their entire lifetime crowded into one brief season. None of this exotic ferment could take place without the beaver, which can take sole credit for the creation of this environment. Spring is a good time for the beaver, too. At the end of May, an important annual event takes place in the beaver family. These kits are only minutes old. They are born better developed than most rodents, fully furred and with their eyes partially open. The male has returned to the lodge, ready to help the female through a labor period that may last as long as 60 hours. The mother has carefully prepared a soft bed of shredded twigs, where the young will stay warm and dry. Each newborn receives a thorough cleaning. An average litter contains four kits but a mother can give birth to twice that many. Remarkably, this youngster is already grooming itself. It was born less than an hour ago. Emerging tail first, a third kit joins the first two. Like its sibling, this one needs attention, but the mother is preoccupied. A fourth kit is about to be born. In this case, a gentle push is needed to break the umbilical cord.
In just five hours, the family has tripled in size. Now, the endlessly demanding task of raising six young beavers is about to start. The mother prepares for the kids to have their first meal. They will nurse for several weeks, although they will begin taking solid food as well within the first few days. Outside the lodge, spring is in full glory. The animals who have survived the cold approach the pond once more. The elk is still encumbered by the last remaining tatters of her winter coat. She too has given birth. Only a few hours old, her calf lies hidden in the shelter of the trees. She won't leave it on its own much longer, for the forest has its share of predators. But the calf is safe for the time being, camouflaged against the bushes by its speckled coat. The beavers keep their young within the safety of the lodge for several weeks. Until they are old enough to go outside, the parents rarely leave them unattended. An adult or yearling remains at home while others go in search of food. The aspen trees are in full leaf, providing a succulent meal of tender greenery after months of stored, toughened bark. The trees grow in such abundance now that finding food requires very little effort. The warm sun encourages even the nocturnal beaver to bask a little in its gentle rays. The summer season is very near. The new parent has not forgotten its responsibilities back at the lodge. It returns with food to share. The beaver is an unselfish animal. Each member of the family is amply provided for. The young are indulged, allowed to nibble any branch they can reach, but their mother is still the most important source of food. Throughout these early weeks, the kits are awake both day and night in short bursts of activity, exploring the lodge, grooming and playing, and learning by imitating their parents and their older sibling. Their cries will lessen as they grow older, but at this point, they are quite vocal. Less than three hours after birth, the kits could float on the surface of the water. Two weeks later, their swimming has improved, but they still don't weigh enough to dive, nor do they have sufficient breath control to exit the lodge through the steeply angled tunnels. 
It will be some time before they can leave the safety of their home. In the meantime, ever vigilant parents make sure they stay where they belong. Other new families will soon appear near the pond. The nesting period for the wood duck is almost over. The male departs, leaving the female to raise the ducklings. For 30 days, she has been tending her 11 eggs. She laid them one a day, but began incubating them only when all had been produced. This method ensures that all will hatch in the same day. It will take about five hours for the ducklings to force their way into the world. The hatchlings spend their first night safely sheltered by the nest. Tomorrow morning, they will face a grueling rite of passage. Fifteen feet below, the mother calls insistently. It takes a great deal of courage to respond. The terrifying plunge appears to do no harm. In fact, wood ducklings have been known to jump to solid ground some 60 feet below, cushioned by their still soft bones and downy feathers. Like tiny paratroopers, they utter a defiant cry before taking their leap into the unknown. Each hatchling must undergo this ordeal. To stay behind would be to starve. Even if the mother moves her young to a different pond, some of the females will return to mate in their place of birth. As evening falls, the beaver family emerges from their lodge and begins the night's work. Using his incisors, the father is about to fell this aspen. His assistant, his son, born the previous spring. Across the pond, the mother is absorbed in watching over her kits. This is their debut, their first excursion into the outside world. Close supervision is a must. She will keep them far from the half-cut aspen. The whole family will be involved in the training and care of the young, but most of the duty falls to the mother. The father has other business to attend to. By now, the kits have become expert swimmers. They become accustomed to outdoor life quickly and enthusiastically. Still, it will be many months before they can safely travel on their own.
In the meantime, there are other modes of transportation. Strong jaws and chisel-like incisors make quick work of soft-wooded trees. A five-inch willow can be dispensed with in about three minutes. Beavers have been recorded felling a tree some three feet in diameter and 110 feet tall. However, this yearling is not quite ready for such an impressive task. He has yet to master the more basic skill of branch dragging. Activity intensifies as the hour advances. Gathering food and modifying the dam to maintain the proper water level make up the bulk of the night shift. Sometimes beavers dig canals out from the pond to make access to food trees easier. They can then float branches down to the main pond rather than dragging them overland. By sunrise, the beavers will be safely hidden inside their lodge, where they usually remain until the next evening. By day, the pond belongs to other creatures. The moose returned this year with awkward, gangly twins. Born about the same time as the beaver kits, they are just two months old. The twins will spend the rest of the summer near the shallow water. For both mother and offspring, the beaver's pond is more than just a luxury. Its plant life contains sodium, an essential element of their diet. Lessons for the beaver kits continue as they explore the pond and its surroundings. With parents or older siblings constantly around to keep them out of trouble, they are getting better at negotiating challenges every day. Though they still like to hitchhike, the kits are now capable of staying underwater long enough to travel safely to and from the lodge. Already, they propel themselves like tiny submarines. Still, they are far from perfecting the fine arts of beaver life. It will take many months of practice before they master the skills of tree cutting, branch harvesting, and dam repair. At the end of August, the weather has turned unpredictable. Summer storms develop without warning. Heavy showers pound away, swelling streams and rivers. Once more, the dam gives way. The incident is serious. It threatens to drain the beaver's pond. It is the middle of the day, and the beavers have retired to the safety of their lodge. The situation requires quick action despite the increased vulnerability to predators. While the father stays home to mind the kits, the mother and her yearling cope with the task. To measure the damage, 
carefully replacing sticks and replastering with mud, working tirelessly to save the pond. It is an important moment for the young beaver. He has observed his parents maintaining the dam for over a year, but only now when danger threatens has he been called upon to help. Happily, he rises to the occasion. The pond is saved. The beaver's behavior to maintain its dam is compulsive. Its instinct leaves it no other choice. But in its constant struggle against the elements, it provides food and shelter, the very stuff of life for others in its habitat. Generous, industrious, and persevering, the beaver will continue to provide an irreplaceable service to its fellow creatures and to the land itself. National Geographic video. They are man's closest living relatives, but for centuries we knew little about them. Now, from two continents comes an intriguing portrait of the creatures that for so long have fascinated and eluded us. The great apes. I had a tremendous sense of curiosity about the animals I wanted to know all there was to be known about them, and happily, I was rewarded by the same curiosity from the animals. Sometimes it was difficult to know who was the observer and who was the observed. Journey on two groundbreaking missions with renowned zoologists Diane Fossey and Birute Goldikos Brindamore, and share in their startling discoveries. Join National Geographic on the search for the great apes. Vesuvius. In a blast of fury, it swallowed the Roman towns of Pompeii and Herculaneum, and for centuries their secrets lay buried in mystery. Now, the shroud is lifted. Out of the ashes of an ancient disaster, a story emerges. And disaster may well strike again, but a proud and vibrant people stubbornly remain in its path. Join National Geographic on the threshold of history in the shadow of Vesuvius. 
Continue your exploration of the world with National Geographic magazine. Get 12 monthly issues filled with the same kind of spectacular photography you enjoy in National Geographic videos, plus captivating stories on fascinating people and places, incredible animals, yesterday's world, and today's amazing science and discovery. You'll enjoy all this by becoming a member of the National Geographic Society. You'll also receive six valuable maps, and you'll support important scientific research, like the Titanic expedition. To join, phone or write the Society at this address. National Geographic Video, undeniably collectible and affordably priced, only from Vestron Video.